A lot of developers have a problem that they can implement features, but not when they are complex or have a lot of edge cases. Over the last 15 years while teaching people, I see this problem again and again. This is why by the end of this video I can show you how to work on a difficult feature with a lot of edge cases and how to plan it accordingly. The feature that we want to implement is drag and drop. And it might sound simple, but there are a lot of edge cases there, always. And the great idea to start implementation, if you want to become a senior developer, is to start with the plan. This is exactly what we are doing always inside my bootcamp, where I help people to transform from middle to senior. And writing a plan is extremely important, because then you understand exactly what you need to implement and what edge cases can be there. If you jump to implementation directly, then you don't think about global picture. So let's roughly think how we will implement it. We have our list with elements and we want to drag, for example, the first item and put it after the second item. The easiest approach would be to simply change indexes of the elements. So the next element will be index 0 and this one will be index 1. But it is not great for UI, because it would be nice to show the placeholder at the place where it is possible to put an item. So while dragging an item, we want to see a placeholder at the place where we can put it. Then our idea with indexes does not work. What we really want to know is where exactly we need to render a placeholder. Like in this case, we are rendering it on index 1, and it means that we need to change our list. Additionally to that, we need to know what item we are dragging, so we need an index of the item. And one more edge case that I want to mention is that we can drag our item on the top part of the element or on the bottom part of the element. And then we want to render placeholder accordingly, either on the top or on the bottom. So here is my idea. We have two states for dragged index, this is the item that we are dragging, and placeholder index where we are rendering our item. And additionally, here is a note we need to take into account top-bottom calculation. Even this basic planning can help us tremendously while implementing the feature. Now let's look on our project. I don't have any drag and drop, just the list of our items. So here is our dashboard component, where inside we have an array of rows. These are just objects. Every single row has a type row with ID and name. And we are rendering as a list our row. As we need to make our element draggable, we can simply add a draggable attribute here and several callbacks. We want here on drag start, and we need to create an additional function on drag start, then on drag over, this is when we're hovering on some item, and the last one will be on drag end. Now let's add a state that we planned. So first of all, we need here a dragged index and set dragged index. This is the index of the item that we are dragging, so we know that it will be a number, and by default it is minus 1. By minus 1 it means that we don't drag an item. And I will copy paste it and change it to placeholder index and set placeholder index. Additionally, here on my div I have data drag index, which is a row index, so the index of the element. It is extremely important because we want to read from our element the index that we are dragging. So let's create here our first function. It will be on drag start. And here we are getting an event, which is react drag event of HTML element. Now inside I want to get a drag index. And here we can get a target, so event target, and we need to cast it to HTML element dot dataset dot drag index. Now let's console log our drag index. But in order to test that, we also need to create two additional functions on drag over and on drag end. I will just copy paste on drag start and rename because the event will be the same. Now let's look in browser. We have our items and we can actually drag an item. And you can see in the console the index is 0, which we read from our drag index. But it is important to remember that data attribute is always a string. We need to convert it to number. And actually this is quite a lot of code which we need to write in every single place where we want to read this index from our element. This is why I want to create an additional function outside of our component. And let's name it index from event. 
and we are getting our event, drag event, and back we want to get a number. Now I can move this line with drag index inside our function, and as you can see as a data type we are getting either string or undefined, so we can check here, if drag index equals undefined, then we want to throw an error. Data attribute is not set. If it is a string, we just want to cast it to number. And now we have a reusable function which gets for us an index as a number. So here I can just get drag index by calling this function and providing an event inside. Let's try again. I am dragging our item and we are getting a number in the console. Now the only thing that we need to do in our drag start is to set the index that we are dragging. So just set drag index and inside we are providing drag index and we can remove our console log. What I want to do now here in state display on the right I want to render one more div and here I want to see our dragged index just so we always know what we are dragging. Now you can see by default it's minus 1, I started dragging and our dragged index is 2. So let's move to implementing drag over and this is exactly where the logic is when we're dragging over some specific element and also calculate the top and the bottom. And in order to get the top position we can use get bound in dragged. So here we're reading our target and we're casting it to HTML element and we can call a function get bounding client tracked. And it allows us to calculate our epsilon, which will be event client epsilon minus rect top. Let's check what we are getting. I am moving an item, and here you can see the position over the element. So we can create here a variable like over zone, and we are checking if epsilon is smaller or equal rect height divided by 2, then we are returning top, in other case we are returning bottom. So we are calculating if we need to render a placeholder before or after. The next step is to get an index of the element where we are hovering on, and we already have a function for that. So we can get an over index and just call here our helper function index from event, and we are passing inside our event. Now let's just oversimplify that and just for testing set here our placeholder index and I want to pass inside our over index. And as we set our placeholder index, we want to add the placeholder in our list. So after our rendered rows, which will be an array of our elements that we are rendering, we can check that if placeholder index does not equal minus 1, so we set it, then we want to use splice on our rendered rows and we are passing here a placeholder index, then 0, and then the element that we want to put inside. And what it does, it updates our rendered rows and it puts inside on this index this element that we wrote here as the third parameter. And it will move all other elements one index after. So basically it inserts an additional element in between. And now here in our state display I also want to see placeholder index. Let's move the item now, and as you can see placeholder was set. And actually it is even changed based on where I am moving. But it is not perfect, because I can't move to the end to see placeholder there, and it should not actually show a placeholder at the place from where we are moving. So let's tune this now. In order to do that we need to complicate our drag over function. So let's create several additional variables and then go through the code, it would be easier. First of all we need here a target index, and we are checking if our over zone equals top, then we want to take our over index, in other case over index plus 1. After this we want the property is adjacent, and we are checking if our target index equals our dragged index, or our target index equals dragged index plus 1, then it will be true. And the last one is new placeholder index. We are checking if it is an adjacent element, then we are returning minus 1, in other case we are returning target index. And now inside our set placeholder we are setting new placeholder index. So what are we doing? First of all we have a target index where we are checking top or bottom. And we either increase the element on 1, if element should go after it, so on the bottom, or we don't increase it and then element is going before. 
we need is adjusting to know if the element where we're hovering is for example our own element like target index equals dragged index then we don't want to render a placeholder there and basically when we're calculating new placeholder index we're not changing it to the new position so we're returning minus one when it is adjacent element and we're changing it when needed and we're setting a placeholder and this feature is looking simple on the first glance, but it is not that trivial. And this is the type of the tasks that we are doing a lot in my frontend bootcamp where I help to transform middle to senior developers. Let's check our logic now. I am dragging bar and we don't see a placeholder because I am in the same place. Now I can drag here and it is going to the bottom. And even when I'm dragging to the very end, it shows a correct placeholder. So now our dragging logic is working much better. But we're still missing dropping logic. So let's go inside our on drag end. And first of all, again, we're getting our dragged index. After this, we're checking if our placeholder is minus one, because then we can simply reset our state. So let's check placeholder index equals minus one. We want to do a reset. But actually it would be nice to have an additional helper function because we will write this code in two places. So let's create a function reset drag state and we simply change our dragged index to minus one and also our placeholder index to minus one. And now we can call this function inside our if. And we should not forget to return afterwards because we don't want to proceed with our function. Now we need to find an index where we want to move an item. This is why here let's create two index and check that if our placeholder index is bigger than dragged index, then we're assigning placeholder index minus one. In other case, it will be our placeholder index. After this, I want to make a copy of our rows. Why is that? Because they will use splice and it will mutate an array. So let's get here our updated rows by just spreading our rows that we have. And now here we can get our moved row by calling a splice on our updated rows. So we're providing inside our dragged index and one. And now we know which row we need to move. After this, we can use splice again and we're providing to index then zero and moved row. So the logic is exactly the same like we did here after our rendered rows with placeholder. We just insert our new item moved row to this position. And now we just update our set rows by providing inside our updating rows and we need to reset our state. This is why we're calling reset drag state. Now I'm dragging, for example, bars. You can see on the right placeholder index minus one. I put it higher. Now placeholder index is one. I'm dropping an item and you can see that now bars is on the second place and bar on the third. Let's try again. I want to move foo at the very end. So I'm dragging foo, we see here placeholder, I'm dropping an item, and the foo is rendered at the end of our list. And drag and drop is a feature that you can implement in a lot of different ways. Without placeholder, by adding drop zones, it can be really different. But there are always a lot of logic and edge cases. So if you are serious about getting a senior role and learn how to build applications better with great architecture, testing and advanced patterns, then my frontend bootcamp is for you. Check the link in the description of this video.